The topic for today is whether it's possible to transfer consciousness or the soul if you want to refer to it as that from one vessel to another. This concept underpins a variety of different supposed paranormal and supernatural phenomena. From the notion of avatars in the Eastern religious traditions to the idea of demonic possession. It also gives hope of a future in which the limitations of the human body can be transcended by the possibility of our souls simply leaving their shells like hermit crabs and inhabiting other ones instead. To fully explore the dynamics of how a person's consciousness could potentially move to a new body, it's first necessary to look at what exactly consciousness actually is. There are a number of different theories regarding this. One is that it's simply the result of a large enough number of neurons operating in a network within the brain. This might seem unlikely given that the result of one neuron on its own or a group of thousands of neurons in a network being non-sentient, but the same neurons in a larger system being conduits for conscious thought and emotion appears strange at first. It begs the question of why simply increasing the number would make any difference. However, there are established phenomena in nature where properties only manifest in quantities over a certain minimum threshold. One example is water molecules. Quantum physicist Michael Brooks notes that while neither oxygen nor hydrogen atoms, the composite elements of water are inherently wet, and a single molecule of water cannot be said to be wet. If a sufficient number of water molecules come together in the right conditions, they gain the property of wetness. Qualities like this that require a certain number of something to manifest are known as emergent properties. Another example of this is hydrophobicity, the property of getting wet when exposed to water. Writing in the Nature Physics Journal, physicist Philip Ball notes that there's a specific minimum threshold for the amount of some materials that is required for this characteristic to arise, in addition to other conditions. Some have criticised the idea of consciousness as being an emergent property by noting that no other emergent properties have arisen from those that are completely ontologically different in the same way that consciousness, a non-spatial quality with no mass or volume, would have to have arisen from the physical matter of neurons, which possess distinct mass and space. This isn't actually true though, as there are documented phenomena involving specific emotions which are subjective experiences with no spatial element, arising from crowds of people comprised of mass, space and volume that are not as likely to manifest in an individual person. For instance, it's been shown that large mobs are more likely to become angry than single individuals. The idea of emergent properties being responsible for consciousness suggests that there's a level of microscopic complexity at which organisms make the jump from non-sentient to sentient. It indicates that life's likely to have begun at a specific stage in evolution. This begs the question of what it felt like to suddenly become conscious and whether it was akin to a light being turned on or a dimmer switch being slowly turned up. I personally suspect that there are degrees of consciousness and that the latter is more likely to be true. However, there's one major problem with this conceptualization of consciousness. The notion of an emergent property is based on the idea that there's no definable causational mechanism for something gaining frequency beyond a certain point taking on a quality, and that the act of surpassing that threshold can in itself be consequently considered the reason for the characteristic. In reality though, it's possible and even arguably probable that there is in fact an identifiable reason for a certain number of water particles giving rise to wetness, or a certain quantity of other particles making something develop hydrophobicity. There might therefore be some piece of the puzzle that's missing and be an intermediate element that explains the relationship between large neural networks and consciousness. Another of the main theories about consciousness is that it's an electromagnetic field. 
Electromagnetic field theories of mind-brain integration have existed for over 70 years and arose as a means of explaining why the brain as a whole is a unit of consciousness as opposed to the individual neurons or groups of neurons that exist within it. It centers on the notion that consciousness arises from a dynamic electromagnetic field that reflects synaptic currents of neurons throughout the brain. Various studies have been carried out in which external electromagnetic fields have been used to stimulate the brain's electromagnetic fields and synchronous neuronal firing patterns have been observed as a result. This suggests that these fields might cause a unifying effect. It has been posited that while the physical structures of the brain transfer and analyse information, the subjective qualia that makes someone sentient is in fact present in the field that undergirds those structures. A less convincing theory is that consciousness is the result of highly integrated information and the ability of large quantities of information in the brain interacting with each other to produce new information. However, this doesn't explain how the gap is bridged between public properties analysed by the brain and personal subjective qualia only experienced by the individual in question. It will therefore not be used as a basis for my discussion of transferring consciousness. The other main theory, which seems a little out there but actually has some degree of mainstream scientific support, with figures such as Professor of Neuroscience David Chalmers and former scientist at the European Organisation for Nuclear Research Bernardo Castro subscribing to it, is that consciousness is an inherent property of the universe. This means that human consciousness is part of that wider consciousness that has somehow become separated from it. Microphysicists believe that consciousness must be rooted at a microphysical level, as this is the fundamental basis of every macro phenomenon. This gives rise to the notion of every atom being endowed with the basic building blocks of consciousness. Now that the theories that seek to explain consciousness have been outlined, each one can be examined in relation to the possibility of separating it from the human body and implanting it in another vessel. If it truly is an emergent property of the neurons in a network, this would suggest that what makes me me, including my personality, memories and subjective qualia, is simply a configuration of matter. Since neurons, their quantity and the way in which they're networked have a purely physical basis, it creates the possibility that they could be replicated within the head of another being. This produces an interesting dilemma. If my entire selfhood, including me being in the driving seat of my personhood and directly being subject to qualia related to it, is determined by a physical configuration, if that configuration was to be duplicated and placed into another body, would I simultaneously undergo two different subjective experiences? The idea that there's nothing to what makes me me other than large numbers of neurons networked in a specific way indicates that cloning my neuronal networks couldn't possibly give rise to anything other than two me's that I subjectively experience, creating the possibility of distributed consciousness. Could this give rise to a single mind controlling entire civilizations? Far-fetched as it seems, this appears to be the logical conclusion. If consciousness is an electromagnetic field, then it's feasible that it could be transferred from one set of neurons to another. This creates the curious possibility of experiencing the information within one's brain while retaining your own subjective perspective as opposed to that which is associated with the previous owner of that brain. It's also possible that there are ways of moving the electromagnetic energy that comprises the field outside of the brain while still feeding information back to the brain, which perhaps might explain concepts such as interdimensional travel and astral projection. Interestingly, several studies of those not suffering from mental illness who are said to be able to induce voluntary out-of-body experiences in order to enable their souls to traverse either physical or non-physical realms, have suggested that there's evidence to indicate that something unusual is happening in their brains. 
research published in Frontiers in Human Neuroscience, a high-ranking peer-reviewed journal, entailed scanning the brain of someone supposedly engaging in astral projection and found that the cerebellum showed activation consistent with the impression of movement. Regions of the brain associated with monitoring action were also activated. This lends some credence to the legitimacy of the experience. Finally, if consciousness is an inherent property of the universe, and the consciousness in each individual brain has merely been separated from the main pool of consciousness, then the loss of self associated with being amalgamated into the wider consciousness could be viewed as death depending on your perspective. However, there's no reason why the specific unit of consciousness associated with an individual person couldn't be transferred to another conduit capable of preventing it from integrating into the universal consciousness. This might be a man-made vessel such as an android or maybe even a different brain. This could theoretically explain phenomena such as possession that exist in a plethora of different religious traditions where one entity takes control of the body of another. Maybe the beings doing the possessing aren't demons at all, but consciousnesses that have learnt to swap themselves into other beings' corporeal forms. Of course, it's also highly likely that none of the theories mentioned in this video adequately explain human consciousness, and that the truth about it is beyond what most humans are capable of actually understanding. Nevertheless, the fact that there are some scenarios in which it's at least possible for consciousness to be moved to another vessel presents some fascinating possibilities. Our selfhood is often believed to be inextricably interlinked with our bodies, but in reality what makes you you is the choices that you make and the path you decide to go down. Corporeality is merely the vehicle that the soul is driving. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you continue to join me on this journey.